I am Gulule Kungeu, and today we bring you throwback conversations. We are in Pochestrum in the Northwest to speak to one of the best products from this part of the world. We're speaking to Gert Skalkweg, a former Kaiser Chiefs player. He played for Bafana Bafana and Orlando Pirates. We'll talk about his career and what inspired him, why he left Kaiser Chiefs and his stint at Bafana Bafana and why Bafana Bafana are not doing well. You'll be surprised as well to learn that Gert Skalkweg is currently a coach now in the ABC Munsepe League in the Northwest. So we'll chat to him. Hopefully you will enjoy our conversation. Yeah, thank you very much, man, for speaking to us. Um, lovely to have you. How's it been uh, so far? How are you feeling? I'm feeling good, you know. And I must thank you guys for uh, uh, welcoming welcoming me on, on your guys' show. Yeah, I mean, we were watching you uh, actually coaching and I was very surprised. I thought that you were going to be playing when you when you invited us here um, at the Northwest University's gymnasium. Uh, I thought that you were going to be playing. Um, of course, let's then confirm, officially are you now a retired player, a former player? Yeah, no, I'm a former player. It's been long now. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and yeah, I'm coaching now Real Arts here in, in Clegstop. Yeah. But yeah, we'll see. We'll see how far can I go with So this is your first season in coaching? Yeah, it will be my first season yeah. coaching there. Yeah, I mean, it's lovely to speak to you, man. I have so many questions uh, with so so little time that we have. Uh, but I think the first thing, when I saw you coach uh, today, watching you uh, being a coach, the first thing I wanted to find out from you is, what are you, gonna, what are you telling these guys as a former player about money, about professional football, uh, what can they uh, what can they learn from you as an ex-professional about handling of money, about the bright lights of professional football? Yeah, I'm always talking to the young boys that want to play one day in the PSL. Yeah, you know, I, I'm I'm always telling them whatever you get, you must make use of it. You know, even if you get maybe a hundred rand, mm. you must you must make the hundred rand work for you for 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 a very long time yeah you know so yeah but but the boys they they are looking up to me yeah. you know as a ex PSL player and i'm always telling them they can do much more better than me mm. so yeah we'll see i think in the next future next year or so one or two guys you should be, produce a few yeah, players yeah, for the PSL. Will be, will yeah, tell us about your career uh, in terms of specifically with regards to money, with regards to women. Um, what kind of a person were you outside the field of play? Are you comfortable sharing that? Yeah, I can I can share it because uh, you know um, when you when you play uh, professional soccer, you know every girl or, or every guy, mm. or every small kid look up to you. You know. And and it depends what are you what are you doing? Mm. Like you know the girls will come, the, you will you'll get a lot of friends, but but for me I only had like one or two friends until now I I am I, I am still friends with them. Mm. So yeah, and I have my I have still my girlfriend mm. that I was dating when I was playing for Chiefs. Mm. So yeah, you know after football life must go on. Yeah, and how, how has that transition been? Like, of course, you were a former player. For the most part, you were traveling uh, with the team. You were accommodated by the team. You used to eat uh, food that was provided for by the team when you're going to matches. Have you been able now to transition to normal life, being able to pay for your own way, driving yourself, you know, um, going to the doctor yourself as opposed to the medical doctor of the team? Yeah, you know, sometimes when you don't have money, you just think, ish. Why am I not playing soccer anymore? Yeah. You know, you would have just gone to uh, any doctor, you know. Yeah. Yeah, but you know, sometimes it takes uh, other guys a, a long time to recover from after playing soccer, you mm. know. So it also depends on on you. Mm. How fast are you gonna recover from it, yeah, or are you just gonna lay in bed and and reminisce about it? Mm. But you know. Um, I would, I would, I would advise everyone just to go out there. You know, everyone is a made these mistakes. Everyone is still a human being. So, mm. so when you close yourself behind closed doors, you won't, you won't, you, you won't go nowhere. Yeah, I mean, I remember I'm from Cape Town, and I was like 14, 13. I remember watching you play. Everyone knew Hertz Kalkvik in 2004, 2005, 2006, uh, in that period. And I was really mad about football. 
uh, do you still get that, like that every corner you turn, people still remember you, people want to shake your hand? How's life now from that perspective? Yeah, you know, as people uh, people still look up to me, you know, because uh, they will they will always say, "Hey, we won that uh, Chiefs team when you and Torrealba and yeah. those guys were busy playing, you know." And yeah, but um, you know, it's nice. It's nice to see maybe just the older older people knowing you, but the but the young the younger generations yeah, don't know anything won't, about yeah. you. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I mean, let's look at your career then. Of course, you started at, uh, around, I think, at Free State Stars and Business Vest, mm-hmm. where, your, where, where your foundation teams. Yeah. Uh, what kind of environment was it? Uh, who was coaching there? I remember there were guys like Charles Johane. Um, a lot of the players had gone. Guys like Josta Dadla, Rowan Fernandez. They had moved away. Stanton Fredericks, they had moved away to uh, better clubs, uh, so to speak. Uh, what kind of birds did you arrive in? And what uh, what did you learn from that team as as, as Skalkbeck, the young player. You know, when I uh, joined Vets, you know, uh, we had uh, a lot of, there was about six or seven black guys, about nine, ten, eleven, or, or more than that, there was a lot of white guys. Yeah. And, and you know, when you come out still of Vets that, University. Yeah, when you come out of their generation, you think, oh, yo, the white guys is going to be one side, the black ones is going to, but, you know, everyone welcomed me very well. Mm. It was, you know, words. Uh, words really change, uh, change my mind. You know, mm. towards white people. You know, I thought the yeah. whole time, oh man, you know, your your grandma will tell you, no man, uh, white uh, white people, they they gonna do this, they gonna do. Sure. That. But once I joined them, you know, yeah, I really, it was. It was really something else. Yeah, what kind of which which player do you remember? Uh, which players those generations? Uh, guys like Ivan Winston Lee were they still there or they were Gareth still there. Devine? Gareth uh, Devine was yeah. there. Uh, Watkins was there. Yes, yes. Wayne yes, Roberts. Yes. Wayne Roberts, yeah. Charles Ioane was our sure. left back. Stuart Morisa. Sure. The, guy, the team got relegated as well um, at some point. Was it still during your period or no, was it after you left? No, it's when I left and then I got relegated. <laughs> so, <laughs> so immediately after you left, the team got relegated. Did yeah. you have anything to do with that? Did the team try uh, to fight against you leaving for Kaiser Chiefs? Do you remember that if you can jog yeah, your I memory? Remember. I remember it very well because there was a time when I had a meeting also with Roger, you know, he said to me, I mustn't go anywhere. Mm. I must, I must, I must still stay with Vert mm. for another season or two. But you know, if you were, if you were growing up supporting Chiefs and all of a sudden you see, hey, Bobby Mutahung is phoning you, sure. Kaiser is phoning you. <laughs> sure. You know, it's like, hey, is this it's a very reality? Difficult to say, or, no. yeah. yeah, but yeah, but things were... We had a nice talk, even yeah. even 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 till now we. It, it, it never broke yeah. the relationship between you and the coach Roger. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and of course now he's like in the management uh, sphere now with Cape Moir United, um, uh, a little bit further away from coaching. Let's talk the financial difference that Kaiser Chiefs move made. Um, how big of a salary gap did it all of a sudden from Verts to Kaiser Chiefs? Um, how big did your life change? How drastic did your life, life change from Bitvis first to Kaiser Chiefs? Yeah, when I uh, joined Chiefs, you know, uh, I bought a car, <laughs> I built my mother's house. Sure. So yeah, it was a, it was a, it was a big difference. You sure. Know? Because financially also, I could have done things that I couldn't done before. You yeah. Know, like. Buying my sister's techies, outfits, you sure. know, yeah.